Hey there again, folks. Welcome back to my Let's Play of Never Seven, The End of Infinity. And we're still in the middle of tricking Okahiko into thinking that it's the, uh, week four. The same week. Oh, yes. Yeah, well, yeah, it is a week. Yeah, I had it right the first time. Just got confused. We're tricking him that it's the, that he's repeating time as, uh, Makoto has in the past. Or in other versions. Not the past. Maybe the past? We can keep going. I was informed by Mr. Dawson to just enjoy, not to worry too much about how this fits in, so that is good advice. I was wondering how this fit it, fit it in. Fit it in, it seems like. Is that proper English? I'm feeling that in a proper English mood today, so. You know, if you're an English Nazi, then eh, English Nazi, grammar Nazi, you're gonna be really uh, annoyed as you are already. So if you, yeah, I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna just start reading now. The clear morning light shines in. I sit up in my. I sit up in my bed and check the date on my watch. Wednesday the third, 10 a.m. That's right, today is April 3rd. Actually, it's April 8th, but to us today must be April 3rd. In order to keep up our act to deceive Okahiko, we have to act as we did on that day. Enter the living room. Yuka's there. Good morning. That's right, they're going to uh, pretend like it's April 3rd, like they skipped a whole nother day. <laughs> Check the old VCR's digital display. The date there says April 3rd. When we got back to the lodge yesterday, we changed all the dates in the lodge so that they read April 3rd. Of course, we didn't forget about Okahiko's watch. I had to take my breakfast to survey the whole room to check it, everything over again. Everything is okay. We haven't overlooked anything. We need to be careful to make sure that Okahiko doesn't watch TV or talk to any of the locals. It's a good thing cell phones aren't in this story because that would be a difficult thing to deal with. Uh, can you change time on a cell phone? I'm not sure. No well, mine, it uh, updates automatically whenever there's daylight savings time, so. I know most of them do, so I don't know. Well, judging from what I saw of this day yesterday, there's probably no need to worry. Unless he somehow manages to figure everything out, he should move just as predicted. Rather, I think that Okahigo will take the same actions he did in the past to reproduce history as accurately as possible so that something unexpected doesn't occur. Sometimes, even I don't know which one is doing the deceiving anymore. I said that before. But all's well. That ends well. Today's plan should go off without a hitch. For long, I hear okay, it goes for steps and voice. <laughs> Haruka comes rushing into the living room with Okahiko okay, hot on her heels. I like how he's already shot. はるかちゃん、それどういうこと今日はプールに来ていいでしょ。ウィスコ君大丈夫弟も変だったけど。だって今日はいい。オッケー、ゴー、テイクイットバックウェンヒロックスイズフェイスコントーテッドウィッチャ
石原の予知病がうつったのかなへへへ。<笑> He's desperately trying to play dumb, but he messed up. This was obviously an error on his part. あれあそういえばクルミちゃんはクルミちゃんの姿は見えないけど。Crap, he finally noticed. あえっと、その。クルミは帰ったの。昨日。春休みの宿題が終わっていないからって。もしかしてみんな僕を騙しているそんなわけないか<笑><笑> He really is a naive guy. あでもはるかちゃんは釣りに行くって言ってるよちょっと今日の予定はテニスなんだけどえテニスはるか今日は私いいなんて言わせないからね班長命令なんだから Herka looks at me with a troubled expression Just like I'm watching a recording of that incident from the real third. So, I o Haruka chan. Yapa tennis de show. Sidina de Jigsai. Yaksoku stano. Everything after that happens the same way as last time. Okahiko is even more resilient in his efforts to keep us from going in than before, but before long, Saki appears with a basket and practically drags him away to go play tennis with her. Then Haruka and I leave to go fishing as planned. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Anyway, I need to tell Izumi Sam my feelings as quickly as possible. This time, it will happen. For long, we finish fishing and return to the lodge. Lie down on my bed while waiting for the next event to occur. And then I hear Okahiko's voice. I run in my room faster than a hurricane. どうしてイシハラなんかと釣りに行ったの? <laughs> Oh man, I just thought of something. Wouldn't it be, uh. Here's a pretty awesome thought. When he's, uh. I guess it'd probably give it away, though. That's the only problem. It, didn't, it didn't say how he punched him. Did he punch him in the face? Did he, did he punch Makoto in the gut? If he had punched him in the gut, would it be funny if he had, like, something, uh. Well, it's making me think of, like, that, uh. Clint Eastwood. Movie, uh, which I don't know if I ever watched that movie, but it was referenced in Back to the Future 2, uh, where he uh, had like that steel plate underneath his, <laughs> underneath his shirt. <laughs> it would be hilarious if, if Makoto did something like that. Maybe, uh, I don't know, a hard book or something. Although that would still hurt, but I mean, it would probably hurt the puncher worse than the punchy. Yeah, that would be kind of a show. Oh, man, I, I, I forgot I was uh, storing my my huge uh, history book inside of my coat. Sorry, Okahiko, I didn't mean to hurt your fist when you tried to punch me. Who's a vulgar bastard? <laughs> I appeared before the two of them. According to my memories, I wasn't supposed to appear for a little while longer, but whatever. My timing won't really affect anything. Probably. What are you talking about, Okay Hiko? I arrive precisely when I mean to. I ignore Okay Hiko's question and slowly approach him. Oops. Okay Hiko is panicking. Do I really look that scary? Probably. All of my frustrations and resentment towards Okahiko have been accumulating so much that they're on the verge of exploding right now. Listen, Okahiko. If you're going to call me a vulgar bastard, then take this. With all my mind, I lunge my fist towards Okahiko's face. My fist stops short inches away from Okahiko's nose. <laughs> Okay, he goes eyes go blank as he collapses, exchanging a passionate kiss with the floor. See, here's the thing. I have horrible depth perception, though. That is a way I should never try to be a badass. Because I will really punch somebody in the face accidentally. So I guess... I guess that's a whole other type of... That's, that's going like halfway to badass. You know, I guess if you... But if you can knock somebody out without actually touching them or make them, you know, then that's a, and that's all the way. It's like Chuck Norris level or something. Phew. I lower my arm as I breathe a sigh of relief. Sorry, Okahiko. Well, I didn't actually hit him, so I guess, I guess that's something he should be grateful for. <laughs> Riku looks at me with a sharp, accusing glare. Because I was pissed off. When I thought about how he's responsible for all my frustrations, I couldn't take it any longer. And he had the nerve to call me a vulgar bastard for a second time. Humans aren't always logical. We're not all Vulcans like you, Haruka. It's because we sometimes act on our emotions that make us alive. Ruga, you should also try living your life by being more honest to yourself. That's enough. I'm not in the mood to answer anything else right now. Hmm? As she mentions it, Saki's supposed to come any minute now. I look down at my feet, I see, Okuhiko, see that Okahiko has no signs of waking up. D did I screw it up? 
We're going to look up Saki enters Smithville Division. Saki's a little bit away from the lodge, holding rackets in her basket and looks at me with a criti criticizing glare. Okahigo comes to around 10 minutes later. However, to Okahigo, it probably won't be a pleasant awakening. As for why? <sighs> he shakes his head a few times and slowly stands up as he blinks his eyes. It's po possible that his memories at the moment before he fainted might be fuzzy. Okahigo then sees Saki standing in front of him, her eyes burning with a repulsion. <laughs> He drops the floor again and he will stand up due to his fear. <laughs> so Lisaki throws the basket to the floor. <laughs> she crushes it. The sound of wood snapping is heard. The basket has now broken apart. Plastic tableware is scattered everywhere. Okay, his eyes are so wide that it looks like they could pop out of their sockets. His mouth drops widely to the point that he could dislocate his chin as he watches the scene unfold. <laughs> sounds like, sounds like uh, he's close to needing some facial reconstruction surgery with his uh, by putting his eyeballs back in and uh, restructuring his jaw. Psychic like glares at him. Okay, goes shoulders shoot up with a start. Seems he's finally realized the meaning behind the scene. Her intensity that seems too strong for acting has left even us dumbfounded. The basket starts to become cruelly tattered. Interestingly enough, the events that follow more or less happen in the same way as last time. <clears throat> the enraged Saki revealed that Haruka is a clone and then caught up by the awkward atmosphere left us behind and returned to her summer house. Of course that was all acting. Okay, so knowing none of this is caught up by feelings of remorse like last time. Zimisan arrives at the lodge with the ingredients to make dinner and things after that are pretty much the same until we get around to the test of courage idea. So, uh, I guess Kurumi was able to attend at that point, right? Zimisan speaks up after we finish eating. Okahigo is keenly interested, probably because he wants a distraction from his depression from what happened to Vasaki. Okay, I guess maybe she's not there. This time the one who suggests the test of courage is a Kurumi, but rather Zumi-san. Out of all the members here, only Zumi-san is familiar with the local geography. Might be pushing Okiko's suspicion, suspension of belief, disbelief a bit, but he might also think that we've arranged this to cheer him up. Indeed, Okiko doesn't doesn't look suspicious at all, and he agrees. In fact, the daring smirk has risen to his face. Just what is he planning? He might be happy since they've got one less person, which would make it not an awkward number. Unless Saki shows, unless Saki goes. Everyone goes outside and enters the forest one by one in succession, just as I'm about to enter the thicket. Ne, ne, Makoto. You turn around when someone behind me suddenly calls me. It's Yuka. Yuka, what is it? Yeah. Well, obviously. でもね、ちょっと思ったんだけど。どうしたの、マコト? This is my chance. Eh? Sorry, you could, but I can't form a pair with you. <laughs> Before Yuka can start objecting, I immediately head into the forest. Thanks to Yuka, I got a good idea. Quicken my pace, and before long, I've caught up to Izumi san. Izumi san, we're really going to do this test of courage. Mm. Now, are we going to do pairs like in the last one? Well, <laughs> Isn't it? And I think that when we get there, it's likely we'll divide in the pairs via rock, paper, scissors. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Therefore, I want to discuss something with you. Zumi san, will you use scissors during the rock, paper, scissors? Yeah. Yes, that's it. 
Well, if you don't want to, that's fine. Yeah, so you don't have to. Anyway, I'll be going. I'll be going with scissors. I understand. I'll do what Makoto Kun says. Zuma said, "Thank you." I'll leave with these words and catch up with the others. The chance I've been waiting for has finally arrived. Izumi san and I become a pair. Then we'll be out of Okahiko's eyesight and I'll be able to tell Izumi san whatever I want. Uh, of course. I intend to confess to her. I can't hold back the loud pounding of my heart. Suddenly, when I look up ahead, I see Okahiko whispering something to Haruka. When Okahiko notices my glance, he quickly moves away from her. What are you planning, Okahiko? A little concerned about it, but all I can think about right now is Izumi san. Okahiko and Haruka are of no concern to me right now. Again, they've got an even number of people, so he's gonna, he's not going to be by himself this time. We arrive at the graveyard. As always, this place has a spooky atmosphere. Izumi san insists that this place is completely safe, but we can't believe those words. Yuka especially doesn't. She'll probably never grow accustomed to here, no matter how many times she visits. We then begin to di divide the pairs through rock, paper, scissors. Say no, John Ken. He really is seeming like he's in a good mood. Okay, go eagerly leads us off, and we all make fists with our dominant hands. Go! Like I said earlier, I have scissors. Izumi San also has scissors. It's decided. With that, I turn my hand so that my fingers turn into a peace sign. But I'm shocked when I see everyone else's hands. Yuka, Oka, Hiko, and Haruka all have scissors. Uh-huh. What's the meaning of this? Go! Again. Everyone has scissors. <laughs> For a few more rounds after that, everyone continues to go with scissors. How is that even possible? What? Damn it! In other words, I won't know what Izumi Sen's next hand will be. Also, wouldn't that make it really unbalanced? Rock. Rock. Paper. But. Why would anybody pick paper? Because there's no way they can win at all. No, I mean, why would anybody pick rock? Because there's no way they can win at all. I mean, anybody who picks rock is gonna lose. Then again, it's not really about the losing, it's about the pairing up. I pick, I pick paper because I want to pair up with a winner. I don't want to pair up with a loser. I don't pair up with no losers. Good <laughs> Rock, paper. Okahiko's voice cruelly echoes in the graveyard. In the end, the pairs are decided as so. Me and Yuka. Haruka is Umsan. Okay, go all alone. What? What? Was Kurumi not technically in a pair? Maybe she wasn't. Okay, yeah. I guess she was by herself, except for the time you're with her in uh, the uh, in her roots. Hmm. Interesting. I forgot that. But I like that he's all alone again. <laughs> Crying Okahiko is funny. Okahiko dejectedly sits down on a nearby tombstone. Reluctantly, I go with Yuka to find the well. We already know where it is. I want to just hurry up and get this over with. <sighs> Good for you. Suddenly the bushes shake. <laughs> you get so surprised by the sound of that she latches on to me. Blah! I lose balance and end up embracing Yuka in order to stand my ground. 
We silently stare in each other's eyes. Yuka's cloudy eyes make me instinctively tremble. Her body is trembling too. I can't move. My body's going numb. No, maybe it's more like I don't want to move. Hey, Yuka. Uh, that's why we should just hurry up and get this over with. So, if you would just let go of me. Yuka's too shaken. Yuka? でもね。一つだけもう一度歩き出すことができる方法があるの。ワイメン。もし誠の手助けが必要だったら協力してくれる。I want to get out of this situation as quickly as possible. Yuka and I are embracing each other, if Kazumi san were to see us, then. Yeah. Yuka says this and quietly brings her face close to mine. The scent of her sweet shampoo from her hair drifts in the air. Because it's a preservation technique. <laughs> okay. Everything's going a little interesting in this route, I would say. I would I would just I would say that. Hmm. Yeah. So I do hope you folks enjoyed. We shall see what happens in the next one, whether this is a choice. Whether this is just a a scene. Hmm. Maybe you have an awkward scene with this and you have a choice and then you at the end you know it's zoomy and then you you can choose yay or nay there. I don't know. But anyway, do hope you folks enjoy and I shall see you in the next one. Farewell there folks.